Hello everybody, grace, peace, and joy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, today I'm going to be talking a bit about pain and suffering, um, as this is a question that often Christians get asked, including myself, by uh, atheists, agnostics, skeptics, whatever boat you want to put them in. Um, and they will, it will typically go like this. How does a good God allow suffering? And uh, first of all, they're right for calling God good uh, when speaking to a Christian because the biblical God is good and loving in nature um, because God is the greatest conceivable being we can think of and it is far greater to be loving than hateful. And it is far greater to be um, kind and compassionate than um, uh, ruthless and arrogant or whatever hate hateful and so um when looking at the nature of god and some people might bring up well what about in the old testament where he punishes people and and in the new testament where he also does the same um the best example for that would be looking at somebody as a father if, if a father sees a child their child um, playing with knives or playing around the stove and, and flipping it on and off and, and doing dangerous things, he is going to come over and stop him and rightfully so punish him for what he did if he's a loving and caring father. Because the one who doesn't care will just simply let them be and, and kind of allow them to do what they want. And this is how God was uh, when humanity was very young and still barbaric and he, he had his... Um, the children of Israel, he, he saved them from slavery in Egypt and brought them out into the promised land. <clears throat> and uh, he still punishes his children today um, by the Holy Spirit convicting us of our unrighteousness. And if you're not being punished of your sin, it means you have so much rejected God and so much rejected your own consciousness that now you don't even feel bad when you do wrong um, by rejecting that. You're so far down the line that you really need to repent of your sins and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, but answering this objection is, of course, it's in God's loving nature to that, that through, through suffering, we learn and we grow. That's Number one. Number two is God gave us free will. We all have free will. Otherwise, he couldn't properly judge the world. And he couldn't properly, we, we couldn't discern anything if we didn't have free will. Um, and so, in part of having free will, the will to do good and to love, also entails that people have the free will to do evil. And so, unfortunately, sometimes we suffer in this fallen world for the sins of others, even if we didn't have anything to do with it. That's just a fact. But um, the Bible is so clear in the steps we are to take in order to lessen that. And I believe, by looking at the teachings of Christ and following the examples, if everybody followed it, there actually wouldn't be um, a great amount of suffering in the world um, as there is. In fact, there wouldn't be any. Um, now, continuing forward, uh, we also see that um, through th the, 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 the biblical God became a man in the form of Jesus Christ, and we symbolically call him the Son, um, the Son of God, meaning how he came out of the Father into this world. He came out of the spiritual realm into the physical world. And showed his glory this way. And so he relates to us when we suffer. He knows what it's like to suffer as we have suffered. Um, we see in the scriptures that he was a, he felt abandoned at his most time in need in the Garden of Gethsemane. His disciples pretty much abandoned him. Um, we see that he felt this on, palm, on what we typically call in the church Palm Sunday. When he was riding into Jerusalem, he was weeping over the people because he realized... You know, this week they're hailing him as king, but next week, just the next week, they're going to be yelling, crucify him. 
Uh, we also know and understand that he knows what it's like to feel excruciating physical pain. Not only mentally um, feeling hurt. And so he relates to us in our suffering. And because this is an event that happened to God, it, it exists in eternity past and in eternity future. So this is why we also read language in the scripture that God um, uh, weeps with his people and suffers with them. So thanks for watching, guys, and take care.